Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is going to be the start of Target uh, 2B. Um, we are going to be kind of skipping A for a brief second here. Um, we will get back into it. Um, what I want to talk about is adding and subtracting polynomials. Um, and just as a kind of review here, when you first started learning math, you know, when you were very, very young, you were taught about addition and its opposite subtraction with numbers. They teach you how to count, they teach you the first hundred numbers, and then kind of teach you how to make more numbers. And eventually you were taught that you can add or subtract with variables. So let's kind of look at the numbers here, right? If I have one of something and I add seven, so I'm going to go one and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then add another one, eight. So you, you learn how to add and then kind of with that, when you learn subtraction, eventually you learn about these things called negative numbers, right? These numbers that represent not having something, but owing something. So, you know, like if you have a, a, a credit card or something or, or a debit card and, and you, um, you have five bucks in your account and then you buy something that's worth 10, you owe five at that point. You know, there's an extra five that you owe. So um, if I have three minus nine, the number in front is smaller than the number being subtracted. So we're going to end up uh, with a negative number. Now, this concept translates to variables pretty much the exact same way. We just have a variable to keep in mind. So this is 1x plus 4x. So if I have one whole x's and then I add another 4, I mean, you could think about it as anything, right? x could be shoes. You know, if I have one shoes and then I get four more, um, I have five in total. And we just use that X there to kind of represent whatever it represents, whatever it needs to represent. It could be anything. Same thing is true for the first subtraction, right? If I have eight Z's and then I lose five, I take away five, I'm left with three total. Now, the question for this new unit is going to be, what if I combined the variables and numbers? What if I took these and combined them to create polynomials? So what if I had X plus one, in parentheses there. You'll notice parentheses have been really important in this school year. Um, and then I add 4x plus 7. And actually what I have to do is I have to look at the x pieces. I'm going to kind of put those together. So x plus 4x. And then there's a plus there. There's this plus right here. And then let's take our non-x pieces, so our number pieces, which is the 1 and the 7. So I, I'm reordering things because it's addition. Addition, you can do the order in any way you want, right? Like if I do 2 plus 3, it's the same thing as 3 plus 2. You know, the, the order for addition doesn't matter. So um, this is a problem that we just did up there. Um, you know, x plus 4x is 5x. Oops. And then 1 plus 7, again, this is something that we did up there is 8. Now, we can't actually combine these any further. This is as far as we can get with the problem, just 5x plus 8. Um, we can't combine a variable term with a non-variable term. Those are not like terms. We have to kind of leave them as they are here. Now, what about subtraction? Subtraction is actually very interesting because it's not addition, so we can't freely write everything. So what instead, we're going to do is we're going to distribute the negative to both pieces here and turn it into an addition problem. So this negative is going to go to the 5z, so negative 5z. And this negative is going to go to the positive 9. So negative 1 times you know, positive 9, negative 9. We switch it. So you're just switching the signs when it comes to subtracting. So I get our variable terms. And then our non-variable terms. And again, that's something that we just did up there. So 3z plus negative 6, which is just 3z minus 6. Probably the easier way to write it. 